Today you're going to learn how to use five simple reverb and delay techniques to make your mixes more exciting, more fun and more unique. By using effects creatively and combining them with a little automation, you can make mixing way more enjoyable and produce better results. And in fact, I'd go as far as to say that this is one of my favorite parts of mixing. So keep watching and as ever, don't forget to download the free effects cheat sheet. From dust to dust, Rob here from Musician on a Mission. Hope you're having a great day. So here are the five reverb and delay techniques you're going to learn in this video. Reverb throws, sub reverb throws, delay throws, atmospheric reverb and reverse reverb. So let's start with reverb throws and rather than explain where it is, it's easier just to show you. So here in this track, we've got a bit of a, an empty part. It's the space between a chorus and a verse. There's not much going on, so we can try and fill this space with some effects. Let's have a listen first. So we already have a bit of a delay throw in there, and I'm going to come back to that later, but this could have a lot more going on in this space. We could make it much more exciting. And by using the last word of the vocal here, we can manipulate that with some reverb to try and fill this space. So let's start by just creating a reverb sound that we want. And I'm just going to loop this section here. And we can just do this on the actual channel itself. So we'll load up a reverb. Let's just go for Valhalla Room. And let's try and create something really interesting. First of all, we want something that's gonna be quite long to fill that space, but let's see if we can make it a bit different too. So we, first of all, we wanna make sure we get the mix right because we don't want this to be 100% wet because it's not on a bus. Uh, and then a bit of pre-delay, that's, that's fine. Decay time we want to be quite long. Let's try something around 10 seconds, getting to 10 seconds. And then let's just play around with these other settings. Down. Down. So that sounds really cool. It almost has like a rhythm to it. But at the moment it's a bit over the top. So let's try reducing that mix. So because it's interacting with the delay throw that we're gonna come back to later, that's what's giving it that rhythm. But of course we don't want this on the whole verse or the next verse. You find your way and you will clear the smoke. So all we need to do is go into automation and in logic you just hit A, then we're gonna to go to Valhalla Room and we're just gonna automate the bypass, which we should have somewhere here. It looks like we don't have bypass, so instead let's just use mix. So that's the level that we had it at um, for this actual word, but we only want it on that last word. So we can just reduce the wet to dry mix there and here. And now the reverb's only gonna come in for that last word. Down, look down, look up, look down. And that sounds like it comes in a little early. So let's try moving that back a bit. Down, look up, look down. And it sounds a bit unnatural, so let's turn it down a bit. So there we go, reverb throw. And it's called a throw because we're just throwing the vocal to a reverb for one word, and then it comes back out. You find your way and you will clear the smoke. So now let's move on to the next type of throw, which is a sub reverb throw. Now I class this as something different because it has quite a different tonal impact and a different effect on the mix. This reverb is quite bright and it's also quite noticeable, but by really shaping that reverb and making it really low pitched, um, and that's why I call it a sub reverb because we can try boosting the lows, we can give it a very different tonal characteristic. So now to set this up, we're gonna to have to approach it a little differently. We're gonna to need to do it on a different channel. So let's just load up a new send, and then we're gonna to go to mix view, and in Logic, we just have to turn on automation um, to bring that back into our project view right here, and we can call this sub verb. Then we've already dialed in our reverb, so we can just copy that across, 
And then what we're gonna do differently is add an EQ beforehand. We're gonna really aggressively boost the lows here to really bring out a thick, heavy, drenched reverb sound that's very low and full, but we don't wanna make it over the top in the low end. So we're gonna cut all of that out and then we're gonna remove all the top end as well to give it a really deep, epic sound. Um, and just listen to how different this sounds. Down, up, down. So first we just need to automate that send. So we're gonna go to main, sub reverb, and then it's down here and we just wanna bring it up for this one word here. So it's muted, then it's unmuted, and we can adjust the volume. Down, up, down. Halfway round, muted, unmuted. Down, up, down. So let's listen to this in solo. So this is how the sub reverb sounds on its own. And now we need to bring the wetness up. So it's a very different characteristic. And what it tends to do is really add a lot of thickness to a certain section. Now let's listen to it in the context of the mix. Let's try fading in a little bit with some volume automation. And I think we can even increase the room size a bit. So it's more subtle, you have to be careful with this because sometimes it sounds a bit odd because the vocal obviously is quite full and bright and then this reverb throw is very dark so you have to kind of blend them together. But this works well on all kinds of instruments. Just like the reverb throw, you can use this on anything, not just vocals. We tend to use effect throws the most on vocals because they're the focal point for the listener. But if you have an empty section that hasn't got vocals before it, you can try adding this to a drum hit. It works really well on drum hits because they don't have a tonal element to them. So it sounds a bit more natural on drum hits but it's a great trick to try if you want to add interest and depth in this kind of epic quality to emptier sections now let's move on to the next type of throw which is delay throws so you would have heard this going on in the background a little bit but now i want to show you how we're doing it so we've got the vocal here and it's actually being sent to a lead vocal channel so i'm automating this channel with the volume so that we've got a nice consistent level but then I'm applying compression on another channel. So the lead vocal is going from here, output bus one, bus one coming into this channel. And the reasoning behind that is so that the automation is before the compression. So the level going into the compressor is nice um, and even. If you want to learn more about that, check out our video called Vocal Automation Trick. Because what we're gonna talk about now is this mono delay send, which is send 26. And on input 26, you can see mono delay. We've got, I'm using Manny Marikin delay and it's just time to a beat, a quarter note. And let's actually just listen to how this sounds in solo. You find your way and you will clear the smoke. Raise above it all, but always look down. So it's just time to a quarter note. We've got a bit of reverb on it, a bit of phasing. That's why I love this plugin because it's really easy just to make those delays a bit more interesting. And then the important thing here is that the send is being automated. So you can see at the end of each phrase of this verse, the send goes up quite a lot by uh, seven dBs almost. And there's still a little bit of delay tucked in underneath the first few notes, but then after that, we're bringing it up to fill this gap. And in the context of the mix, that just adds quite a lot of interest to that section, those gaps between the phrases. You find your way and you will clear the smoke. So really easy to do, as you've already seen, we just need to automate that send level and just bring it up for those boring bits between phrases on the vocal. And this is a really common technique. So that's it for throws. And now I wanna talk about two different types of reverb, one of them being atmospheric reverb. And then the next one we're gonna talk about is reverse reverb. Now I use the term atmospheric reverb to describe the use of reverb that isn't just to create depth. So quite often in a mix, we're using a reverb bus or some kind of reverb with varying amounts of sends from different instruments. 
to get a blend and this is called the room reverb well that's what i would call it anyway so we can actually listen to how that sounds in this track And that's how we create that front to back image. The vocal is front and center, hasn't got much reverb on it. And then the snare and some of those other melodic parts have got a bit more reverb on them to create depth and also to add some width to the mix. In this case, I'm using a stereo reverb. But sometimes you wanna use reverb much more creatively. Sometimes you wanna drench the vocal in reverb or you wanna drench guitars in reverb. And that's absolutely fine. When you're using reverb as a noticeable effect, then go crazy with it. Do what works for the track if that's the kind of ambient atmospheric sound you're going for. And in this track, I actually ended up using that kind of effect on the guitars at the end. And there's kind of this uh, dreamy guitar part. There's two of them actually. And let's have a listen to those. So these two parts here, Dream and Dream 2, um, let's just solo them first of all with no reverb so you can just hear what originally we're working with. So we get rid of, I've got Valhalla Room and I've also got Logic's Silver Verb there. Let's have a listen. So already there's quite a bit of reverb on them. I'm adding reverb in bias effects and it's just kind of an arpeggiated chord. And then I duplicated it and pitch shifted it down to put in the left ear to create this kind of stereo sound. So we've already got reverb there, but you can clearly hear the separation between the notes. You can hear each note being picked. But then when we bring in, first of all, silver verb with 100% wetness and a big room size, It changes from distinct picking into just this kind of mesh of sound. And then if we add another reverb, this time Valhalla, again, 100% wet and quite a large room. Now it sounds more like a synth or a pad, something like that. So we're just creating this really heavy ambient sound. And we're doing the same in the left ear with this other part. It's just pitch shifted down a bit. Now, I like to use this quite a lot in choruses. It's a great way to just pad out a chorus. And what we're doing here is just padding out the very last kind of outro chorus. Pretty simple, just heavy reverb and feel free to play around with that. It works quite well on vocals as well. If you want a really epic vocal sound, we can just add reverb directly to the vocal and just drench it. If you do that, I recommend you use some kind of pre-delay that's gonna help you to keep the reverb separate from the vocal without losing it too much. And just play around with the, the tone of the reverb as well because it's gonna have quite a big impact on the tone of the vocal. If it's a really bright reverb, it's gonna make the vocal sound brighter. If it's a really dark reverb, the vocal will sound darker. <laughs> So feel free to play around with that. Just get creative with it. And normally this will come in quite early on in the production. If this is the kind of sound you're going for and you yourself will know that, then you want to start playing around with reverb early on because it becomes part of the song, part of the production, as opposed to just a mixing tool. And now technique number five, which is reverse reverb. And I'm going to just show you how this sounds before I explain what it is. So it's this kind of ghostly reverb that goes into it and it's called a reverse reverb because it's the reversed vocal then a reverb has been added to it and then it's been reversed again. So I'm gonna walk you through that process now, but this is a great trick when you wanna create a kind of ghostly sound. Uh, here, it just 
worked. I just thought, ah, oh, this might sound cool here. Gave it a go and, and really liked how it sounded. It's quite a sparse arrangement, so I felt like that really filled it out and added quite a lot of interest. We've got quite a lot of automation going on as well. Without this automation, it sounds quite odd. Have a listen. Still sounds pretty cool, but it overlaps and it clouds the vocal. So let's actually just listen to it in solo so you can hear what's going on. Pretty eerie, right? So it's a very cool effect. So now I'm actually gonna show you how to do this. The exact process is gonna vary from door to door, but, but the general process is that we wanna start by reversing the vocal, then we want to add reverb and record that, so it's reversed vocal with reverb on it, and then we reverse that recording, so that then we've got the vocal back to the right way around, but it's actually the reverb that has been reversed. Now that sounds kind of confusing. I'm gonna show you how to do it here. So the first step in Logic, at least, is to open the file editor or audio uh, track editor with E, go to functions and reverse. And that's gonna reverse this whole file. So as long as we don't move this, we can reverse it back in a second, it'll be fine. Now we need to add some reverb. So we can use anything. Uh, I'm just gonna use stereo rim for this. And let's just cut the the lows and let's make it kind of medium to slow decay or medium to large room size and we want it to be 100% wet as well. So we might want it a little bit quicker than that because it's this last word mostly. Let's try playing with the reflections. I'm just adjusting the decay time there because we don't want it to be too long because then it will be a really slow fade in. I suppose we could always speed it up afterwards, but that sounds about right to me. So now we actually need to record this somehow. Now, the easiest way to do this is to add a new audio channel and we can create a send here. So let's say 21, set that to zero. And then we actually set the input here. If we change this to reverse verb, we set the input to that bus, 21. And if this is record armed, we can then record it like so. Okay, so now if we go back to this one and reverse it again so it's normal. And now we've got our reversed reverb. So if you want it for the whole verse, you'll have to record the whole verse. But this is what we've got now. So the next step now is to reverse this. <laughs> because right now it's just a reversed vocal with a reverb on it. We want a reverse reverb. So we go back there, reverse. And now this is where the magic happens. So we probably only want that one little bit there. So we could cut it up, we could automate it, that's up to you. Let's try just cutting it up instead. So we've got like our, our cool little fade in now. And let's make that a bit longer. And if we line that up with the transient of the first verse, then that's gonna sound quite natural because they're gonna line up perfectly, like so. And let's see how these sound if we solo the vocal. Ah, got to get rid of that reverb and let's get rid of that send as well. Okay, let's try again. So maybe we want a bit more of that and a longer fade out. And of course now we can EQ this. It sounds a bit dull at the moment. So let's see if we can remove some of that, bring it out a bit more. Let's listen in the mix. Pretty cool, right? So it's a complex process. Once you've done it the first time, you kind of understand exactly what you're doing. It probably seems intimidating here, but give it a go. 
it's a great little trick to have up your sleeve. You probably won't use it that often. It's more of a songwriting trick than anything because it becomes a really important part of the sound when you start doing this. It has quite a big impact. And from here, you could try adding more effects. Maybe you could add some chorusing to it. Just play around with it. Have fun with it. So there you go, five easy ways to make your mixes unique using reverb and delay. Now we covered a lot here. And of course, there's a lot more to reverb and delay, not just using throws, but actually dialing in these effects. So I put together a free effects cheat sheet that will help you to get reverb and delay right every single time. So you can make your mixes sound more professional. And then I want to hear from you. Do you heavily rely on effects when you're mixing? Just comment below saying yes, I use a lot of effects or no, I don't use a lot of effects and then tell us why or tell us some of your favorite tips. So that's all from me. I'll see you next week and remember, create regardless. <laughs>